video is brought to you by Lightspeed Aviation. While you're at NBAA, be sure to stop by booth 3818 and find out about all of the special offers from Lightspeed available exclusively for business aviation pilots attending the show. With Zulu and Mach 1, we've got you covered. Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting from NBAA here in Orlando, Florida. If you'd have tried to sell an Air Force brass hat, a turboprop attack plane 10 years ago, you'd have probably caused apoplexy. But now that the business cycle is on the downward trend, at least three companies are doing exactly that, including Embraer with this Takano uh, attack aircraft, and also Air Tractor and Hawker Beechcraft. We recently interviewed Russ Bartlett of Hawker to explain how Beechcraft is pitching the T-6 as a potential attack aircraft for the Air Force. First of all, we've already done a lot of the uh, weapons development and uh, test work on the T-6. The Greeks, when they bought the airplane back in the late 90s, wanted it to be weaponized. So 20 of their 45 airplanes have the capability to deliver practice bombs, actual bombs up to 500 pounds. They can carry rocket pods and gun pods. So they use those both for training and in a limited operational capability. So some of that work has been done in a very basic way. You know, it's all analog, uh, not the solution we're building now. But today, I think it's quite clear that Secretary Gates has made it a priority to win the war you're in. You know, and as long as we have people on the ground in Iraq and Afghanistan, we need assets over there. And it's not always the high-end solution that we tend to go with in the U.S. that's appropriate for the task. So the time is right for a turboprop light attack airplane. And we've got this airplane that's out there in the fleet. We've got 560 of them already fielded. We've got a proven capability to do this work. So now what we're doing is just putting an advanced cockpit and uh, sensor suite into the airplane, the appropriate pipes to transmit the data, all proven uh, and fielded capabilities and integrating them into the, into the T-6. Well, it, there's a lot of diverse roles. I think the primary driver here is, is counterinsurgency work in places like Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, you're putting a sensor package in the air, you've got air crew in the cockpit who can do real-time analysis. I mean, sometimes you just got to have a person up there. Uh, we're trying to put predator caps everywhere as fast as we can. It takes time to build airplanes and train crews. It takes bandwidth and overhead. All those things, you know, are factors that make this thing relative, relatively uh, relevant and appropriate for the task. But there's also a lot of ancillary roles that could be used uh, in the states in a training role, training the forward air controllers, for example, the ground crews that control the airplanes from the ground. Always tough to get TAC air support to train those folks on the ground. As a surrogate for a predator, providing imagery to train those crews. And even for a companion trainer, for predator pilots, for example, so they can get out and get actual flight time in an actual aircraft, both for currency and proficiency, so they can do a better job when they're inside the cubicle flying the predator remotely. Significantly, there are requirements for the U.S. Air Force program. It's called OAX. One of the requirements is limited protection from small arms fire. So as part of the AT-6 uh, development, we've got uh, armor going in underneath the engine and underneath the cockpit to provide that type of protection. There's also a missile warning system and countermeasures that will be installed in the aircraft, similar to other frontline combat aircraft that we have now, chaff flares, things like that. Well, right now we're in the development phase. We have a couple of milestones that we're doing with the U.S. government to prove the capability of the aircraft, as are our competitors. Uh, so this fall we have a demonstration with the Air National Guard, which will be primarily an intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance collection demo. And then our, the, the big one is next summer, the JEFX-10, where all the competitors will, will play and show a complete you know, detection to weapons delivery capability. So that's really what we're going after. This is all, as I mentioned, in support of the OAX program uh, for the U.S. Air Force. This video brought to you by Lightspeed Aviation. Come see us in booth 3818 at NBAA 2009.